How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 17 of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian WWE podcast that reacts and discusses to Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten, and we read your fan questions out there that are tweeted in to the show. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker, available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or on the Spreaker app available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, this podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWR, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio, so go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow the podcast on Twitter. Facebook and Instagram by searching up No Holds Barred WP and be sure to go over to our YouTube account and subscribe to us and hit that bell icon for all upload updates. When we are done recording this, guys, and all links will be done in or in the YouTube description below on the YouTube version of this podcast. So go check us out. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And I am joined via Skype by my co-host. He is the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Duh. 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 Yo, I just figured out next week, if we go to SmackDown, we get the return of Ellsworth. Is that I'm next week? Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, it's not. He's, I, he's he's free in like a day. He's free. You did not just say he's free. He's free in one day. Man, that is going to be hilarious next week. I, if we SmackDown. I, I'm not going to look forward to that. I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to look forward to that. Why not? Right. He's going to help Carmelo win against Naomi next week. The match is already booked. Yeah, but that's just a regular singles match, not even a title match. Uh, may- maybe he'll cash. She'll cash in after. Can you oh imagine? Oh my she god! In to, uh, next week when we were there, I probably lose it. But then I give no credit to Ellsworth because it was definitely all from my all my girl. Yeah, right. I'm interested Ellsworth to see what they do. Can you imagine he comes back and they suspend him again? <laughs> <laughs> he gets suspended for another three. Like we're just going to keep suspending you until we figure out what to do with you. I think I need to make an Ellsworth is free sign for Tuesday. You need to copy Carmella's shirt exactly. You need to like find a print of that <laughs> face, get a black Bristol board in and white crayon right free at the top of it. <laughs> and just hang it over try, the rafters. <laughs> try to make something work cuz we'll yeah. We'll see. That'd be hilarious. Um, but yeah. So speaking of next week, we're going to Raw for sure. We already got yep. the tickets. Raw and well, yeah, we're no Raw for sure. SmackDown, we're still trying to get to, but both is in our uh, in Toronto, which is basically an hour away from us. So we're pretty excited for that. So any of you guys out there listening and are going to Toronto, you know our silent f- followers that remain anonymous, um, we're going to be there. So come check us out. I'll be between where our seats are. Come say hi. Talk some WWE. And look out for us. I'll probably tweet a picture on Twitter and our Instagram of what I'll be wearing. Probably carry my uh, icy title belt as well, too. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how you're going to be dressed like for uh, that Raw. I'll probably have to wrap both my girls at the same time. Both so at the same be, time? It'll be a mix of Banks and Bliss somehow. Hey, speaking of both your girls, um, news out of today, Bailey's hurt. She injured her shoulder, I guess, on Raw. Could we maybe? I know we're probably likely going to get Nia Jax, but maybe they they change their minds and they rework a story and add your girl back in. We get Sasha oh, and Alexa God. again. Great. And next week we'll we'll, we'll see it because that'll be the beginning of it. God damn it, Bailey! Like, why does she have to be? What what did she even do this week to get injured? It has something to do with her shoulder. I know. I have to go back and look. Uh, Michael Chow's in the chat. Michael Chow TV, the podcast. Go check him out, guys. He's on Spreaker as well. He's got a wrestling podcast. What's going on? The host from the West Coast. Yes, Michael Chow. We are looking over your document, and we're going to talk. We'll we'll get in contact with you and talk yeah, about. And speaking of that, Cobra guys, because next week me and Cobra Cappy look like are most likely going to both Raw and SmackDown. The long show will not be next week. We have something special for you guys, and me, us, and Michael Chow are working on a d- fantasy draft special for you guys, which we're either going to be on Spreaker or YouTube Live. We're still getting that in the works, but look out for that sometime next week. We're going to try to get our schedules together and get that for you guys, so no lowdown show next week, just to let you guys know if you're wondering if there is going to be one. Yeah, it's going to be the special draft video, just like last year. I might do a small vlog of our time at Raw. Maybe that. Maybe I'll put that on our YouTube channel, so look out for that. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know if it'll be as extensive as Survivor Series weekend, though. But Yeah, no, that was a big video. And I, I figured out after that I had the camera the wrong way. And now, now which way to put the camera? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, another thing to plug, guys. We have an all-day podcast coming up. The Lowdown in Brooklyn, and if you heard our last one, Lowdown in Orlando, we're doing an all-day podcast from probably around the same time, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., basically discussing Raw, SmackDown, and NXT from that th- from that week. We're also going to go over predictions for TakeOver and SummerSlam. We've got some contest prizes, all that jazz. So tune in. It'll be the Saturday of NXT Brooklyn 3. So and make Skype sure you- calls. And we'll take it in Skype calls. So if you guys want to call the show, add us in the Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast on Skype. I'll add you to contact us and let you call in. And we'll uh, talk some wrestling. I mean, we're going to cut the times down, but yeah, we'll t- <laughs> let you call in. Yeah. Low down in day. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, yeah. Brooklyn. Since, yeah, you got to get that that uh, sound clip for that. 100% day. we're going to have that clip. I might even use it as a theme. I don't care if we get monetized. I- Give no shits. We're using that theme song. May our boy uh, <laughs> JTG will let will let us will let us use it. <laughs> and get Chad Gaspard on it too. Yeah. Anyways, so, lastly, if you hear this, if you hear like tinging, it's I'm drinking a glass of my boy Lord Tensai sweet tea right now. So <laughs> you did not just say that. <laughs> I do have sweet tea right now from the states. It's delicious. So. Oh my god! I got my boy uh, Red Bull. Okay, so if you hear ice, it's it's just it's just you know sweet tea. All right, mm-hmm. he's just making an appearance, drinking, <laughs> making a, a first time appearance on the podcast. Yep, <laughs> sweet so, tea. Uh, before we start, I did not watch Raw this week, just as a disclaimer. So yep. you're going to mostly talk over Raw, and I'm just going to give you my general inputs of the trash dumpster fire show that we saw this week well it was pretty bad considering that i went over it with you in two quick minutes before we even went live on the air and like literally is just the just of it when you have a show main eventing by big show and big cast you know it's gonna be a fucking dumpster fire um we got a michael shell creative in the chat he says alexa bliss versus bailey match gets a call off gets called off Ooh, alexa appears at SummerSlam and issues an open challenge oscar accepts the challenge after losing to Ember Moon the day before at TakeOver. Oh, God. <laughs> Woo! What like a prediction. In the chat, Asuka would destroy Alexa. So let's hope that that does not happen. <laughs> yeah, it's probably going to be Nia Jax. It's going to be Nia Jax. You know, she's not like most girls. Or maybe, you know, maybe they should give Mickey James or Emma a chance. But, you know, probably not. Especially Emma, who's like all over Twitter right now with this give Emma a chance thing. She's like reposting like really bad posters people made too. Like, of like you know she heard Jason Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> you know she's bored when. But seriously, give Emma a chance, man. She's finally back. She got handed the worst gimmick ever with the Emmalina gimmick. And then they changed her back to the heel and they're just like, ah fuck, we're not gonna use her anymore. Like poor Emma. Yeah, I know. Speaking of North Diva, I don't know if you're gonna talk about this is Sunday night heat, but do we wanna discuss the little backstage possible cameo we saw this week? Yeah, um, I'll just talk about it now because it ties into what you also read before the show. Um, there's a – and if anyone has WWE on Snapchat or if you have Snapchat for that matter, um, there was a there was a one snap of uh, – was it Dasha Fuentes? Is that what her name is? Uh, maybe it was Charlie Caruso. Or Charlie Caruso. Anyways, one of them. And then she's about to do like an interview on Snapchat and she's talking to the people behind them going, what are you guys looking at? And like this, you can see this figure in the background standing up and then walking past. And literally, it looks exactly like Paige in like full ring gear. Yeah, it's like it's really dark. So like, and she her she's really pale. So it's it sticks yeah. out. And everyone's saying, saying it's it Sasha because of the sunglasses. It's because of the, sunglass, it's so. of the, the sunglasses in her head. But that's really pale for Sasha. If you guys know Sasha Banks, she ain't that pale. Camera or not, she cannot be that white on TV or a, a video phone. So I don't know, man. It, it, I think it might be Paige. Maybe they maybe Paige threw on Sasha glasses on top of her head to throw people off and make it seem like it was Sasha Banks. But even if it's Paige, what the fuck is she doing? Why was she in full know. ring maybe, gear? Was maybe that... she was having a meeting with Carano or something. I don't know. Anyways, um, and speaking of Paige, what you read to me before we even went live here, apparently her and Del Rio are set to <laughs> are prepared to set the record straight, um, uh, tomorrow on uh, Sirius Satellite XM Radio. I think it was you said it was uh, yeah. Bubba Bub- Ray's. Bub- Ray's. 
I don't know. If Bubba Ray is going to be on a show with somebody. I don't know if Bubba Ray hosts the show. I can't find the article anymore. But, oh. but uh, apparently but they're going to yeah, set they're... the record straight. I'm sure we're going to get a bunch of other posts by other media outlets about the, the, the getting clearing stuff straight. Again, you can go on a radio show and you can sit behind a mic and say everything's okay, but you're not going to get everyone to believe you. You could seriously be just controlling Paige to go on a radio show and just tell tell everyone that everything's okay. It's bad. Yeah. It's just you you can't do anything to clear the image because Paige's family has come out and said publicly that they think Del Rio is the worst for her and have seen Del Rio like be physical with Paige and don't think she he's right for her. So when you have Paige's family do that, I don't think they would just come out and bluntly say that. They're not that type of family. They're looking out for her daughter. So as much as they want to clear the air, no one's going to believe it. People are going to see through the bullshit. So I, I'm going to listen to it. I'd love to see what the fuck they have to say about this, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I really don't know what they have to say, but I feel like, like you said, it's going to be mostly bull crap. Yeah. So apparently Michael Chouse is on Darby's Instagram. They confirmed it was Sasha Banks doing a zombie photo shoot, which is why her skin mm. was so white. But then you got Trey Patterson, at Trey Patterson on Twitter in the chat. He says, I thought Sasha Banks wasn't even at Raw this week. Mm. So we got a conspiracy theory. Maybe we should get the fashion police on the, on the, yeah, the scene the, for the this. the fashion peaks. They're in, oh, they're, sorry, yeah, they're in the red Fandango, room. Oh, my God. We'll get to that on SmackDown, but that was yeah. – I don't know what the fuck that was. But <laughs> uh, we, we need Fandango on the uh, on this uh, on the case here. Yeah, we need we need, we need need our boy uh, Dango. Or the, the dangler on Up, Up, Down, <laughs> Down. <is it? laughs> the dangler. <laughs> oh, God. Anyways, anyway, let's uh, let's jump into the, uh, the reaction, I guess, or uh, discussion about uh, – we'll start with Monday Night Raw. Uh, and again, Corporate Cabby didn't watch it, so he's going to react to what I have to say about it and basically what happened. Um, so we opened the show. We we're in Pittsburgh, so obviously we we're going to get Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle's hometown. He's a hometown boy, and they always give a good reaction to Kurt Angle. He opens the show, and maybe the most luck laster opening to Raw. I don't understand why they, ha- they have to have the GM come out and, and tell everyone what's happening tonight. Wait, wh- why? You you do it anyways with the fucking promos. <laughs> like the promos before they go to commercial break, they like they basically show what's happening throughout the night, and the, the, the people in the crowd can see it. So why the fuck have them do that? I know again, what happens after is is probably a reason why. But they could have had something else. They could have done something else, man. I, I was just like, it was so. It, Kurt Angle's becoming extremely scripted, man. Like the whole him saying, "I," <laughs> he made the crowd say, "Broken freaking neck." When he say he, because I guess uh, Monday was the exact day he won the the gold medals, like twenty one years. Oh to the my date. god, that's funny. And he like made the crowd say "broken freaking neck," but he like said it slow, and like was trying to get the crowd to say it with them. And I'm like, oh my god, man! Usually you just say it. Like now you're just becoming too scripted, and it's just oh, it's bad, man. And now when he says it's true, it's and he slows down and waits for the crowd to like catch up with him. <laughs> like just say it. <laughs> God, oh, it's like his Hall of Fame speech all over again. Seriously, it's wearing his Hall of Fame speech every goddamn week on Raw. Um, but Brock Lesnar interrupts him, and uh, he makes like a massive announcement, which kind of plays into the whole UFC rumors and uh, John Jones from the UFC coming out and calling out Brock Lesnar. But uh, basically, after the whole spiel by Paul Heyman, he says that if Brock Lesnar doesn't win the Universal title at SummerSlam, he's walking out of the WWE and Paul Heyman is walking out with him. Wow. Um, wow. That is huge, eh? That, that's, that, that, a, that's a big statement. That's probably yeah. the only thing that relevant that happened on Raw. So now you have a huge fatal four-way at SummerSlam with the Universal title. Now you're adding this into it. This is, <laughs> it's making it more and more huge, man. That's definitely going to be the main event come... Uh, SummerSlam, 100%. Um, so now for sure we get Brock Lesnar dropping the title. <laughs> now if it wasn't already bluntly obvious, it, it's even more obvious he's dropping the title. And he's going to go accept John Bones' challenge. He put on Twitter, be careful what you wish for, little boy. Yeah, but then I also heard a rumor that he's definitely performing at WrestleMania next year. So, But it could be like the Mark Hunt thing. He went over to the USC and fought Mark Hunt while he was still contracted over WWE. Yeah, I mean Vince. He's got Vince by the balls. He can do whatever he wants with. Vince, I think. So. I think this is going to tie into why Cyborg is being allowed to show up at SummerSlam 
and probably with the four horsemen at the Mae Young Classic, there's probably a deal made between Dana White and Vince McMahon to allow some cross-branded things. And I think uh, I read, too, a little bit that there be, and you'll see you're testing the waters for this cross-branded thing thing to make money for each other and we know WWE is apparently broke as fuck since they're making all these cutbacks so why not try to make more money yeah i mean it makes it more real i guess that they're putting ufc in there mm-hmm. i mean it might get some ufc people to tune in who knows so yeah but i think we're we're getting a title drop by brock lesnar 100 percent uh i think so too and yeah, yeah. I don't, I, hope, I don't think he's getting pinned but i, I hope it's not michael be... cole's boy the big dog Roman Reigns to win the honestly, title. Honestly, best case scenario, Roman gets pinned by either Strowman or Joe. Yeah, it's not going to be Lesnar. That's it's no. Lesnar not being pinned. It, it leaves a, a opening for him to return to the WWE. Yep. Yeah. He's so. not. He's going to lose the title, but he's not. You know, personally, going to lose it himself. Yeah. He's, it's going to be someone else in the match to lose it for. Him. Yeah. Um. So. The rest of the three, besides Brock, had a triple threat match tonight, which everyone thought, in, including myself, that Brock Lesnar was going to interfere and just cause havoc. But this match ended up being at the 10 o'clock hour. And I'm like, what? So then what the fuck's the main event? And at that point, I'm like, oh, okay, so we haven't seen the woman yet. I thought the woman were going to be in the main event, which turned out not to be, and we'll get into that later. But the triple threat match was at the 10 o'clock hour, and it actually was sick. I loved it. And I'm like, why the fuck was this not the main event? It's the universal title match. Why is it not <laughs> going to be the main event? This whole show tonight was unorganized as fuck. It's literally so, like they took the script or no, the uh, the lineup card and threw it in the br- in the blender, hit blend, dumped that shit in the table and said, "All right, whatever it lays out, we're going to go with that." Yeah, it was like a lottery. Whatever came out last. Terrible, man. That was <laughs> And apparently I read or I heard some podcasters talk about they said it because they did it because they knew about the drop off in the third hour, so they wanted to get that match out of the way so people would actually watch it. Or maybe you make some good freaking TV <laughs> and have people stay for right? the third hour. You have no excuses for lazy TV with a roster that you got. You have the best roster you have in I don't know how many years, but you continue to make excuses saying, oh, fuck, we have three hours. What the hell are we going to do? We might as well push the main event to the 10 o'clock hour. That's bullshit. You have no excuse. So then maybe I should tune out after the second hour then. Right? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> yeah, so that doesn't make any sense. They're kind of like putting themselves in the hole now. Now they're going to get drop in viewership because people are just going to turn the channel off after the second hour saying, oh, if WWE's going to push everything to the second hour, I might as well not even watch the third hour because, heaven forbid, you missed this week's main event, which is probably the big, the worst main event in Raw history. <laughs> big Show versus Big Cass. How the well, fuck is Big the- Show main event a Raw in 2017 <laughs> is beyond me. He's done it like three times this year. Who's back there is approving this shit? You no, know, it's Vince and his boy, <laughs> Beaver. So, oh my but, god! <laughs> oh, he uh, loves I, Big Show. I want to know what had a bigger drop off: SmackDown from the second hour to two hundred five live, or Raw second to third hour? I don't know. I'm just saying that the Raw main event being Big Show and Big Cass gets up there with how bad of a pay per view Battleground was. Literally, I can't believe they made that the main event this week. How, How the long, fuck do you, you end watch? a show like that? How do you get people to tune in next week? When you end off, the last thing you see on TV is Big Show helping Enzo to the back. How the fuck am I excited for next week's episode of Raw? They oh, I better, see, I better see what goes on between Big Show and Big Cass. Was the, was the ending of the triple threat good? Could it have ended Raw? Yeah. Well, No. I mean, it would have been typical. Roman Reigns won clean against Samoa Joe. <laughs> yep. We had to have Roman Reigns win this week. Gotta keep him up there, man. Even though there's still rumors that they're going to be maybe second-guessing him, Vince is like, oh, no, I'm still going to put him as the... We're going to still shove him down people's throats. He is the big dog. And you know what I hated? I want to point this out. It was during the Paul Heyman promo. They, uh, You can tell that it wasn't Paul Heyman's line. You know how Paul Heyman becomes is unscripted. He ne- yep. he always writes his own lines. The line he said about Roman Reigns, I'm like, this is Vince McMahon telling him and yelling him to say this line. <laughs> so he calls Roman Reigns the undertaking sla- the Undertaker slaying Roman Reigns. 
Are you fucking kidding me? Is that <laughs> is that necessary? The Undertaker slaying. He didn't. And then kept Michael Cole kept saying like how Roman Reigns. Uh, they keep every week they say like how Roman Reigns uh, uh, retired the Undertaker. He didn't retire the fucking Undertaker. Undertaker retired himself. He chose to retire. It wasn't Roman Reigns. I love how they're. I love how they're fucking manipulating this into making it seem like Roman Reigns is a big guy and he, you know, he ended the Undertaker because he was so strong going into that match. The guy was fucking fifty years old. He was this freaking. If you touched him, he would have went to dust. It was. It wasn't like it was a Ric Flair career-ending match at Mania. Like it. Like it actually has a stipulation. Stupid man. Undertaker slaying Roman. When he said that, I'm like, oh my god, yep, that's Vince telling him to say that. There's no way. Paul Heyman would have called Roman Reigns the Undertaking Undertaker slaying Roman Reigns when he's the one that preaches about Brock Lesnar being the the guy who defeated the undefeated streak. It's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, Lesnar beat Taker first. This makes no sense. Yeah, Michael Chow, I agree. <laughs> so what what else can we rant about on this show? Um, I want to rant. I actually want to talk about something that I'm excited for, and it's probably the one. He, Actually, it's probably not the second thing I'm, I'm, I, I've loved on Raw this week. Uh, Balor and Wyatt's feud uh, is escalating. As it's intensifying. I, I, intensifying. Uh, Bray Wyatt come out and cry. And the people give Bray Wyatt flack for his promos. He's a good promo guy. I don't know why yeah. people are giving him shit for saying that he, he's boring. How is he boring? That's his character. He has to give promos like that. If you don't understand the promos, that's your fault. That's yeah, the type of character I he think, is. I think what people are mad about is because they can't believe him because whatever he I says, know, he just he loses. loses anyway, so no one cares. Anyways, he cut a good promo, and we actually got a demon tease. At the end of his promo, we had the, the heartbeat, that heartbeat sound with the red blinking lights, mm. and the crowd was going nuts, and then everything goes dark, and then Undertaker style, the lights come on, and Finn Balor is appearing right behind Bray Wyatt, with his back to Bray Wyatt. And then Bray Wyatt just starts laughing hysterically like he usually does. You know, tries to show no intimidation. Um, and then he wants to go give him the Sister Abigail, but he gets Pele kicked <laughs> straight to the face. And then uh, basically Finn Balor is left strong. So I'm loving the intensity in this feud. We're 100% going to get the Demon Balor if this wasn't any proof of it. If if they don't, then I don't, I don't understand why we get the tease. There's no point in having the match in the feud if Demon Balor isn't awake awoken. Right. Balor this. Club Balor versus Bray Wyatt's boring as shit. Yep. I want to see the Demon. We're gonna get at SummerSlam. I cannot wait for in this Brooklyn, match. Man. It's gonna Both be these sick. guys and people are not giving this this enough credit. Both these guys are incredible in the ring. You know what? I just think it needs a little bit of something. I think it should be a number one contender match. That would be sick, yeah, because Balor still hasn't gotten his freaking rematch yet. Yeah. It should. Make but it a number it one contender for the universal title match. It won't. We're not going to get that. You, no. We know WWE. They're not going to do that. Because no. Roman Reigns is the number one contender for, like, Re- regardless. for the next two years. Yeah. No matter what, Roman Reigns is always... There's no other number one contender. It's always going to... If Roman Reigns doesn't have the belt, he's number one contender forever. <laughs> Everyone is a number two and number three contender. Yeah, that's for you, Juggy, wherever you are. Yeah. Um... Rollins and Ambrose are teasing more that the the shield is coming back together. Okay, um, this can, we, can I just say, why are we putting singles guys together for tag teams and instead of just leaving the tag teams together? To be honest, I, I I was waiting for Ambrose to finally turn heel and we'd get Rollins versus Ambrose one on one. I I was hoping for that to happen, but it looks like Maybe. we're getting Rollins and yep. Ambrose versus Cesaro and Sheamus out of the blue this week. Um, oh, they're guess, back finally. Well, I guess after Rollins and Ambrose kind of had like a a weird conversation backstage, and it left Rollins alone. They were seen making fun of Seth Rollins, calling him, um, "Oh, what the hell did they say?" Um, oh God, it was such a good line too. I forget it. <laughs> Anyways, um, Rollins uh, ends up having a match with Sheamus. I was really hoping it's Cesaro. Because uh, they were kind of te- almost looked like he was teasing it was going to be Cesaro, and Sheamus steps in and goes, I'll face you. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, we want to see fucking Sheamus against Rollins, not Cesaro against Seth Rollins. <laughs> Anyways, uh, they uh, obviously do the, the obvious beatdown after the match, and um, Ro- Ambrose comes out for the save. 
and they're just teasing more that Rollins and Ambrose are on the same page, and we're getting like sort of like a mini Shield reunion. I don't know. I, I I can't get behind this because I know Ambrose is going to turn on him eventually. If they if it's not SummerSlam, maybe they win the titles, and then it's at the next pay per view he's going to turn if, on him. Like it's people, just inevitable. And people, if you're looking for the answers to why Roman Reigns is not added to this, and you and you use bring it to the table as your logic, don't fucking do that. That show is the worst show imaginable. <laughs> what I've seen this week makes me sick. That show is literally just Darby's way to shit on the fans and and shit on the on the fans on Twitter. Yeah, so what, and what happens? Sly, and it's sly, JBL again? Yeah, it's in their sly little way. They they, they make fun of the fans on Twitter. There's, oh, God, it makes me sick when they said that. They're talking about the Shield and would Roman Reigns ever go back. They're like, oh, no, Roman Reigns uh, would be nothing on the Shield. He it wouldn't do good for his career. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Roman Reigns joining the Shield would do wonders for his career. He might actually get cheered. <laughs> what Darby actually wants. And the rest of bring to the table just uh, some of it was good and like the other times I'm like oh my god they just shit on us. So who was it? It was JBL Rosenberg and Corey Gray. Yeah, yeah. I just I I suggest you go watch it, but I I'm preparing you that you're gonna be upset after you're done watching it. It's, it's I, garbage, man. I literally think JBL is just Vince talking to. I think so too. He's the guy. He's the biggest kiss ass backstage. <laughs> <laughs> and he hates the internet marks in quotation yeah. marks. Yeah. Screw him. And you would you'd be pissed what he did at the beginning of the show. There's a bunch of JR's barbecue sauce on the shelf, and he took a trash can and went over and threw them all in the trash. What? I don't know what, I don't know what the hell this, this scripted spot was before the show even started, but yeah. God. I think I'm, I think I'm going to burn our JBL equals rating sign. I might block him on Twitter before he even gets to block um, me. Maybe just a JBL part. We can keep the equals ratings. We'll make it for somebody else. Yeah. Ronaldo. Yes. Um, go to, oh my God! Oh no! NXT won't have commentary for Saint. Yeah, Catherine. no, it like, sucks. Anyway, anyways, uh, speaking of the rest of the tag teams, the Hardys Club and Revival are like mixed into this feud with each other. It kind of looks like they're gonna have like a triple threat feud at uh, SummerSlam for like a number one contendership. Even though I think it's should be just the Hardys and Revival because they're the ones that stand out out of this feud. The club are just there for the sake of being there and being on TV. Um, but the the revival were on commentary and the Hardys faced the club. It's a fucking cycle with this feud, man. It's the Hardys versus the club, the club versus the revival, revival versus the Hardys. Like that's what we're getting every goddamn week. <laughs> um. But anyways, the most interesting it, part happened after, right? Yeah. So we had a brawl, and then they brawl on the stage. It was pretty good brawl, the one on the stage after the match off the admit. But after on the YouTube live exclusive. Or the YouTube exclusive interviews, um, Matt and Jeff Hardy cut a promo, and literally they are 100% broken throughout the entire promo. <laughs> Matt Hardy doing his whole teeth thing, too, going... Like, his fucking teeth Oh, thing. my God. Oh, God, it was awesome. <laughs> and I, he ends the, the interview off with a... Yes. He ends off with one of those. I'm like, oh, my God, like just be broken already. Uh, but they said <laughs> something has awoken inside them. Oh, and everyone better be prepared. So we're we're gonna get broken at SummerSlam, 100. percent I can't fucking wait for that. That'll be one good thing to take if they have like any kind of match. These three at SummerSlam, we're gonna get the Broken Hardies. So I can't wait for that. Now I really hope it's Rebby. How they make their entrance, starting out on the piano, playing the theme song. I would lose my shit. <laughs> I would absolutely lose my shit. You can see like King Maxwell sitting on top of the piano. I die. <laughs> Maybe we get Vanguard or Senor Benjamin. Yeah. I, I think it'll be for the number one contender, Michael Chow. I know there's no logic here, but I know it, I don't agree with it either. I don't understand how Rollins and Ambrose come out of nowhere and always and get automatic title shot. It doesn't make any uh, sense. My, These other... my Skype is like cutting out right now. Oh. You're like really choppy. So oh. I'm going to call back. Okay. So, while uh, Corporate Cappy calls back into the show, yes, Michael Chai, I agree. There is no logic. It sucks. Because I wish these teams who are fighting, like, every goddamn week and having these intense brawls would actually be fighting for something. And they're not fighting for a title shot at SummerSlam. They might even just be fighting for a number one contender shot in a match at SummerSlam. And you get Rollins and Ambrose coming out of nowhere and automatically getting a title shot makes, I don't know, zero sense to me. I don't understand. But yes, Michael Chai, I do agree with you. Broken logic. 
I hope we get the broken gimmick at SummerSlam. I think we're honestly going to get it at SummerSlam. I think that's where we're going to be the debut. We're not going to get it the Raw before. We're not going to get it the Raw after. It's going to be right at SummerSlam. So it looks like maybe the Ed Norholm and the uh, GF, GFW or Impact, whatever holds the this bullshit against the Hardys, it looks like it's probably finalized, and I hope it is because uh, according to news, GFW applied for four trademarks, and they got denied each one of them. So... And that included uh, Broken Matt Hardy. It included Brother Nero, Vanguard 1, and the Broken Universe. So they got denied all three. So we'll see what happens. And I think I got Corporate Cappy back on the line here. Yep. There we go. All right. Um, I was just saying how uh, Rollins and Ambrose automatically get a title shot. Not sure how. Not sure for Ah. what reason. Ah, you know, it's WWE logic right there. WWE logic. Yeah, okay. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's, it, according to Mike Shaw, it's broken logic. Yeah. No, oh, broken. God. <laughs> okay, so was did we have an Elias Sampson uh, sighting this week? Or sorry, just Sampson? Okay, no, it's just Elias. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. Elias. Stupid. Yeah, just, just, just Elias. Anyways. I hate um, that. Why? Because I think Elias Sampson sounds so much better. Like, why do they always have to drop names? I don't know. It's Vince McMahon, man. You, you can't argue with that. Look sure, at all the that, names they've dropped. That's the Trump answer right there. That, that, that's the Trump card. So, Vince McMahon. Okay. Vince McMahon. Yep. Uh, Next. Vince McMahon. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, you were saying Elias. He faced Kalisto this week randomly. <laughs> Because that made sense. Yes. <laughs> wow. The, the great Kalisto. Sin Cara's doppelganger. Well, actually, no. Sin Cara's changed his mask now. He's got a, a whole new mask. woo Like, everyone cares. I don't understand. I didn't understand this match. I really, to be honest, I didn't pay attention. Okay. Well, then I guess... <laughs> Elias versus the Braun slaying Kalisto. <laughs> okay. It's true, he's beaten Braun Strowman. <laughs> Moving on, because I don't want to talk about this anymore. This is really going nowhere. Um, Miz TV was on this week. We had Jason Jordan. And Jason Jordan, man, you got to bring more to your, 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 uh, your, I guess your character here. Because Miz ate you alive this week. Miz is probably the, one of the best heels in the company, but he just ate. Jason Jordan alive. Okay, this that's week. what I was saying last week when he had his stupid backstage interview. Like it was awful. Like he's literally like so bad on the mic right now. He it seems like he has no confidence in what he's saying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I gotta figure out why I can't hear you that well right now. I don't know. Oh, you sounds like volume's like very low. I'm turn it up here. Can you hear me now? Not as loud as it was, but it's fine. Anyways, right. um, no, like he's bringing nothing to his character. He basically the entire Miz TV promo, like Miz called them out for like, oh, you, some people are booing you, and then he gives us this bullshit answer like, oh, if they want to boo me, then boo me. Why, why give us that answer? Like, if they want to <laughs> boo me, they can boo me if they choose to. You don't look for boos. You're trying to be this like Kurt Angle son and like this baby face, and you're saying it's okay to boo me. No, you should be trying to win him over. And Miz just ate him alive, man. Miz just literally his 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 questions and his oh my god, just Miz killed him. Miz killed him basically. Bottom line, Miz killed him. And Miz is the best heel in the company. I'm telling you right now, Miz is one of the best. Oh yeah, Jason Jordan's new theme song is probably the worst theme song I've ever heard. Michael Chow said it sounds like I'm playing off my laptop as I'm throwing it out his window. Yeah, it's bad. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm glad they let Chad Gable keep the American Alpha theme. Oh my god! It, it, dude, I'm so glad Chad Gable got to keep that theme because if he had to change that, I would have been so pissed. Chad Gable suits that theme. Jason Jordan's theme—they got to do something to it. It was bad. Um, oh my god. <laughs> but anyways, he's got to get some. I know he's good in the ring. Like his ring work doesn't need to be touched. His charisma and his mic work, though, man. Oh my God, something's got to give, man. And they're not doing Seems anything. Like... Why, why are they not doing anything with the storyline? 
I don't know. It seems like he's slowly slipping into Apollo Cruz. But we got all this build for for what? Who is he gonna face at SummerSlam, Miz? Probably for the IC title, but like it was this big secret, and they've done nothing since they revealed it. Yeah, what's Kurt Angle done? It's not like Kurt Angle's like having backstage segments with him, mentoring him, and well, Miz called him out saying like he he's just gonna be given everything by uh, his dad, Kurt Angle, and um he kind of uh, got pissed off at Miz for saying that, so it kind of looks like they might start a feud. Miz even offered to him for him to join the Miz Taraj. Oh yeah. Because that's definitely a, a, an established crew right there. Yeah, Michael Chow talking about Big Cass's remix theme. Oh, my God, it's bad. It's so bad, his theme, too. Both new theme songs that debuted this week are garbage. Yeah. Absolutely but, garbage. Like he says, is CFO Dollar Sign not writing or, you know, producing the songs anymore? I don't know, man. Like, something's got to give. Like, it's bad. <laughs> They gotta uh, rework we, those two. They're not their best work, definitely. We did have one bright spot. I really like the new Usos uh, rap part in their in their song. The rap part. They have, yeah. They, oh they yeah, have, that's right. They have lyrics now in their song. I like yeah. it. Yeah. So like it's the same. It's like a rap into it that they that they made. It's actually really good. I like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as for Jason Jordan's theme, God. Terrible way to kill a guy's push for it starts. My god, <laughs> it's like Cesaro get all over again. Remember when he came out with the whole siren thing? We're like, Oh, yeah, way to kill this guy's push. Yeah, as yeah, the Paul yeah. guy. Yeah. Oh, um, there was a useless cruiserweight match in Raw this week. Some <laughs> six man tag that I really don't give a shit about, and I'm not gonna talk about it. And do I want to talk about the main event? No, I don't. I do not want to talk about a main event of Monday Night Raw after what, sitting there for three hours and you give me a fucking main event of Big Show and Big Cast. So you know what I'm going to end off with? I'm just going to end off with talking about the woman. That's it. After that, we're going to go right into SmackDown. I refuse to talk about a shitty main event. Your boy Anyways. was in it. No. Anyways. The woman. We had uh, Bailey versus Nia Jax this week. Big Show does not equal ratings, Tree Patterson. <laughs> Stop it. Yes. Anyways, oh Bailey and I Jax fought. Uh, this is apparently where she got her shoulder injury because now she's legitimately hurt. This is not a work. So she hurt her shoulder. And Nia Jax probably being unsafe. As you, man, she's huge in the ring, man. It's so hard for her to be safe. Uh, she's a little bit too aggressive sometimes. So, I'll have to admit. So what? What was the spot that Bailey I don't know? Got I have on? to. I literally have to go back and and see. Don't you just wrote in the chat, Paul White from Universal Tower? Are you serious? <laughs> you guys trolling me right now? <laughs> of course. Anyways, We're corporate. Uh, so now, yeah. So it's not going to be Alexa Bliss and Bailey now. It's definitely thrown out the window. So are they going to turn Nia Jackson and Alexa Bliss? Even though they they kind of started this friendship between the two. So is Bailey for sure done? She well, sure. She, she's legitimately injured. It's a legit injury. Yeah, but she's got three weeks. Ah, maybe they know. Maybe it's a bad injury. Maybe it's a. Uh, maybe the doctors say like she's gonna need more time. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. We'll have to find out next week when we see in Toronto. Maybe we get the match and like Alexa like squashes her in fucking two minutes. God, that would be <laughs> awful. That would be great. Can that please That'd be happen? terrible? What are you talking about? Why would I want to see my girl get squashed in two minutes? Because I would love to see my girl squash cringely in two minutes. Cringely, yeah. Well, I kind of agree with you there. Um, but I yeah, think I, they're having I to be... I think the Naya thing would be interesting dynamic. I mean... One thing I want to point out, um, I think the Raw in Toronto and SmackDown, I think they're going to announce WrestleMania 35. If that's the case, I swear to God. I'll be so pissed. Because why Honestly, else? Why, think, why why would they be in Toronto two nights? Usually they would go to I mean. Ottawa. I think, I think they're doing it as a test for the Raw and SmackDown after Mania. Like maybe they're doing it as a test to see if, if yeah, I can you see know, that. Toronto can handle two straight crowds like that. Yeah, I can kind of see that happening. Yeah, if we um, get it announced on Tuesday uh, or Monday, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about Toronto having a WrestleMania, but. I'd be pissed. I think I'd be initially I'd be pissed, but I'd be like, you know what? I want a better experience. I want to go somewhere else 
to experience WrestleMania. Yeah. I don't want to go to like an hour up, you know, hour to a next city and then go to WrestleMania. It's it, it ruins the fun. I know it saves money, but it ruins it. It ruins the experience. It does. So maybe it is. I think I kind of agree with you there. It's probably a test to the test whether they can host a Raw and SmackDown after WrestleMania and see what kind of crowd they can draw. I think they're going to sell out, to be honest. SmackDown, I mean, look what I they did. Know. Look what they did for Survivor Series weekend. Fuck, they sold out all three shows. Oh yeah, they had Takeover, Survivor Series, and the Raw and SmackDown, didn't they? No, they had Raw. SmackDown was in Ottawa. Oh, that's right. And they had the the NXT people show up on the SmackDown. Yeah, I remember that. Um, but yeah, that was Monday Night Raw. I'm not talking about the main event. Seriously, <laughs> I'm not talking about the main event. I don't want to talk about it. Probably oh, you're gonna talk about it later. Show probably the worst way to end a show. I don't know what the fuck they, they were thinking. They ended the show off with a big show. With with Big Show helping Cass <laughs> up the state. Like, are you kidding me? Or I think it was the other way around. Helping Enzo. Oh, yeah, helping Enzo. Like, I don't know. It was just bad. How do you end the show? Like, How are these guys main event worthy? Are they... Who approved this? Did Vince go home and they're just like, oh, now we're going to fuck with the show? <laughs> how do you approve Big Cass and Big Show in the main event? I bet you Big Show is like why the f- I bet you Big Show is even like why the fuck am I in the main event? <laughs> Who's gonna stay and get excited for that? Like why is Big Show main eventing three Raws in 2017? This god awful, man. This is probably the worst thing ever. This probably- <laughs> the worst ending to a Raw I haven't I've seen in a long time. Does this have to go on the Slammy nominations somewhere? I-, I might have to write it down. Does it go in cringe moment or worst match? This might be worst cringe feud? moment. It was I think it has to. I think it has to be a worse feud candidate. When I realized it was the main event, I was cringing for 15 minutes straight. <laughs> Anyways, uh, SmackDown this week. Uh, okay, if one thing I can say about SmackDown, it's good. But there's too many fucking commercials, and the, they have the most un like <laughs> untimed commercials ever. Like they don't even say they're going to commercial, and all of a sudden they just cut the commercial in the middle of a match somewhere. There were some moments where like the the commentator stopped talking, and then there was like a sequence for thirty seconds, and then it cut to a commercial. <laughs> like they have the worst timed commercials ever. I don't understand why their commercials are so different than Raw. But there's too many. I feel that SmackDown has way more commercials in in, uh, in a two hour gap than Raw has in total in a three hour show. I honestly think SmackDown gets shafted and gets way more commercials. I think Vince sees that he has too many advertisers to try to make money. He's like, how can I fit all these guys on Raw? Oh, I know. I'll just shove them all on SmackDown because I give two shits about SmackDown. And then we miss the good crop of the match that actually happened. How do you go to a commercial before the, the Cena and Nakamura match? How do you honestly go to a commercial even throughout the entire match? They had a commercial mid-match. That match should have had no commercials whatsoever. Yeah, it was good for the people that were there, but it sucked for the millions of people watching at home. If they wanted to make, if they wanted it to be such a dream match, they should have said, "You know what? For the main event for this dream match, we're not gonna have no commercials for the this entire." This was thing. fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I can't believe how many commercials are on a, on a, a SmackDown on a weekly basis. It literally yeah. it drives me insane. I was getting so pissed watching this. <laughs> like, no cell Phil was over watching. Like, he, he was laughing how mad I was getting. I, 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 I put out a gif of me, like, sma- a panda smashing the computer. I was literally almost at that point. Anyway, it's so we op- they opened SmackDown. Okay, if they open SmackDown this good, and I saw a lot of people uh, talk about it on Twitter, they need to open SmackDown with a match. None of these need- segment crap like Raw does. And they opened with the U.S. title rematch. And I'm like, okay, this is how you start a show. This is how you get people invested. And this is how you get people to start and keep watching. They opened with Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles, U.S. title rematch. Even though I don't agree with the U.S. title being defended for the third time in three week, or two weeks. So third time in two weeks is being defended. Battleground, SmackDown last week, and SmackDown this week. Yep. Um. It was actually a really good match. These guys actually can put on a decent match, and I'm excited the feud is now continuing to SummerSlam, which I honestly thought it was going to end after uh, Tuesday Night SmackDown this week. These guys are incredible in the ring together. My God, are Owens and Styles just unbelievable, man. These guys gel so well. It's, it's like Zay- It's like Zayn and Owens in the ring. I think, honestly, I'm not trying to toot Owens' horn, and I'm a big Kevin Owens fan. He can make anyone look good. He can work with anybody. 
Yeah, but I can see the same in style saying that, too. he can't work with everybody. <laughs> he can work with anybody that's <laughs> like an AJ Styles or a Sami Zayn or that type of wrestler or even a John Cena as we've seen. Putting Owens like against like a Jinder Mahal or Randy Orton is not going to do it. That's going to be like the worst match of all time. <laughs> but yeah, I agree that both these guys have such, you know, they're so diverse in their styles that and it works. We got Mike Kyoto with like the best sell I've ever seen. He didn't even get hit. <laughs> he got Kevin Owens completely missed Kyoto, and Kyoto did like he jolted back so fast as if he like he just got struck by lightning. Man, these refs take better bumps than the wrestlers do sometimes. They got to figure it out. And this was basically the reason why Kyoto was blinded in one eye apparently, and he didn't see that Kevin Owens was clearly his arm was all the way up as AJ Styles won the match. Um, it led to Owens arguing with Shane and. Uh, Daniel Bryan backstage and holy crap man that was <laughs> when Kevin Owens gets heated up it's almost like he's not acting this is actually what Kevin Owens looks like and he, it yeah. sounds like when he's mad he's just throwing shit all over the place yeah <laughs> it was great and- well did you see when he pushed Kyoto Kyoto went flying into like a <laughs> bunch of shit I'm like oh shit is Kyoto okay <laughs> how's Kyoto been like what the fuck man like <laughs> so they announced the rematch for SummerSlam I'm like are you kidding me really they're going to continue this? Okay. I cut, and in my mind, at first I'm like, maybe they shouldn't, but then I'm like, oh, this saves the this saves the, the opportunity that Cena's not going to go for the U.S. title. Thank Christ. Because <laughs> Cena getting dumbed down from the number one contendership to dirty title to the U.S. title makes zero sense, in my opinion. Yep. So, then they announced a special referee, and then they announced it's Shane. I'm like, oh, so the rumors of him being involved at SummerSlam were true, but not in a match. So I'm he's okay going to be the that. special ref. That is awesome. I like that a lot. So him being the special ref between Owens and Styles. And I think they, they actually want Owens to face Shane McMahon. And I think that's going to actually set up the, the, the moment where Shane is going to screw over Kevin Owens. Yep. And it'll probably be them two at whatever the next uh, SmackDown exclusive pay-per-view is. Yep. Which uh, I'm okay with. I'm okay with them having a match at a lower-end pay-per-view, just not SummerSlam. Yeah. And I think the next um, one's... Uh, no, no, no mercy's raw. Whatever SmackDown's going to get, yeah, I maybe don't they get Clash of Champions. Oh yeah, I think they do now. No, nah, but either no way, uh, I really like the way that this whole segment happened. Like Owens getting screwed by Kyoto, not seeing what happened, then losing his shit backstage, and then making Shane the referee because Owens said they wanted a co- like a not an incompetent referee. Yeah, so I liked yep. it. I really liked the segment and the whole way it turned out. Again, though, I gotta point it out because I gotta point out every single time WWE thinks what we're idiots and make and and makes and thinks we forget shit. Do you remember the last time someone put a hands on an official? They get fined. What happened to that rule? <laughs> what happened to the rule of being suspended and fined for touching a, a referee? Remember they had the whole ordeal with all the refs together in the GM's office and saying how unsafe it was for for them. And they, they initiated the rule that now superstars will be fined and suspended for touching an official. What the fuck happened to that rule? I think I think Shane threw it out the window because he knew Owens was upset because Kyoto screwed the match up. But yeah, but still, I don't know, man. If you it's again one of those things, I don't forget WWE. You can't. I'm not no. one of those idiot fans. I'm not a casual. Are we, are we gonna get another walkout for unsafe work environments? Could you imagine Kyoto walks in? He he'd be the guy to lead it. He's a senior referee now. Yeah. So, anyways, um, yeah, great opening to SmackDown. Got me invested in the SmackDown, man. I was glued to my screen. Usually, I change the channel when it's commercial. Nope, I didn't. I waited for it to come back. And we come back, we get Sami Zayn facing Aiden English. Oh, my God. Aiden English coming down to the ring, taking 12 minutes. Holy crap, man. I made a big deal. as I'm like, my God. Aiden English just wasted half of SmackDown in his goddamn entrance. I mean, as much as I, I appreciate him trying to get heat, that was, like, way too much. But this fucking guy deserves to be on SmackDown and not Ty Dillinger. Oh, he, you know, he beat Ty Dillinger in the great pre-show they had last week. But three out of the four from last week were on TV. Where the fuck was Ty Dillinger? Probably on main event. Unfucking believable man. They're so blind. I guarantee you if Ty Dillinger was still in NXT right now, he'd be being pushed for the main title. I hope he gets taken to go back down during the shakeup. He, he can't survive on SmackDown right now. They're not using him. Raw, Raw, he would be a complete jobber, so he wouldn't last there either. It sucks, so. man. I would. I even said it last week that Zayn and, and, and Ty Dillinger look like a sick tag team together. 
but that's not going to happen because now Aiden English literally Sammy saying jobs to Aiden English for whatever fucking reason someone in the back thought that was a good idea <laughs> and then Mike Bennett and Mike Canales come out or Mike Bennett and uh, Maria Canales come out and cut a promo on Sami Zayn and it looks like this feud is continuing I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen with these guys. Are these they guys gonna be another tag feud. team match in the pre-show? Like, what the fuck is gonna happen here? They already ruined it with them having two matches in the matter of three days, and Mike Bennett losing. You know, why is this continuing? Both? I don't see the direction in this feud. Why do we need to have them continue? I don't understand. I wish Maria would just be put in the women's division, like I keep saying. Like she's a she's like you know. A good enough wrestler to be in the women's division. Sami Zayn's another guy I think would benefit from going back down NXT. I could see him versus Bobby Roode being a sick NXT title match. That'd be dope, man. He never... I mean, Sami Zayn kind of... Yeah, he had his title opportunity, but he only feuded with one guy. Yeah. He only feuded with Owens, and after that, they called him up. Or he got injured, and then he came back, had his Shinsuke Nakamura match. It's probably one of the matches of the year. Not sure why they haven't thought of that on SmackDown yet. They, they forget about that? That these guys had one of the matches of the year last year or the year before? It was last year, yeah. Last year? Hmm? Why the fuck are these guys not face each other yet? I know it's face versus face, but you had that in NXT. What's the problem? Or or why the hell couldn't we have Zayn versus Rusev at least instead of fucking Randy Orton? Right. I was seriously hoping it wasn't Randy Orton. And now Let's talk I don't about know if it. You saw, I don't know if you saw it, but when Rusev was like cutting his promo... And then his music hit. It was like he didn't expect his music to hit because he like turned to the yeah. To the I noticed way. it. I noticed it. And I was like, okay, someone was supposed to come out there, and they hit his music by accident. Way to go, Kevin Dunn. Way to fucking hit the wrong music, doofus. They hit Rusev's music, and he stared at the stage, and then awkwardly stared back at the camera for like thirty seconds. Yeah. Then they played Orton's music. But speaking of Rusev, he and Chad Gable, I think, stole the show. Right, regardless of Cena and Nakamura putting up a good match, Chad Gable and Rusev had an awesome match. To a point where indie stars were fucking tweeting about it. Man, Chad Gable has a lot of potential. Like, uh, I I think I retweeted one of JD's tweets. He said, Chad Gable has more potential than Jason Jordan. I agree. 100%. Dude, Ricochet tweeted about that match. Ricochet. When you have a a, a top indie star tweeting and saying how good of a match and how good Chad Gable is, you know that this, this match was, like, people, indie stars were watching this match. And they better not fuck up this whole Chad Gable because Chad Gable is a hell of a wrestler. He's a oh hell of a, a mat. He can put up a good match like that against a big guy like Rusev. You know you have someone good here. Yep. But again, who knows? Look at what Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn's the same type. And he's a little bit bigger than Chad Gable. Are they using him properly? No. Vince McMahon is so out of touch with this product, it's fucking unbelievable. It clearly shows. You know, it clearly shows. It's bad. Like it used to be, kind of clouded before, but now it's just it's terrible. You can it's clear as fucking day. And you see what Triple H does with NXT and how he builds feuds. It's just like oh, and again, you see how bad it is when he's pissed off. He's pissed off about what Vince is doing. That's why he's. That's probably why they're having this shakeup to bring some people back down because Triple H is so pissed off at Vince for not using the people he grooms and sets up to be huge. Look at the fucking yep. ascension. I say it all the time. They were the most dominant tag team in NXT. They could benefit from going back down. Them and AOP can have a huge feud. Yeah, I feel like Triple H, like, he puts all this work into these guys and building them into, into good stars, and then Vince takes them on the main roster and just makes them into broken toys. Like, he just completely Garbage. ruins all of the pathetic. stuff that Triple H builds up. Anyways, I think Rusev and Chad Gable stole the show this week, 100%. But now we're getting Maybe. Rusev and, and Randy Orton, the most <laughs> random fucking match ever. <laughs> I was hoping even... Randy Orton was taking his summer vacation, to be honest. I was hoping he was going to miss summer. I plan. honestly think they should have. This was fucking retarded. I'm sorry. This is stupid. Why have Rusev... What does Rusev and Randy Orton do for SummerSlam's card? That should be a pre-show match, for Christ's sakes. The pre-show is two hours this year. I really hope Rusev and Randy Orton are in it. Yeah, we'll go get the pizza during that How time. are you going to build these guys in two weeks? Who care? Who is invested in a Rusev versus Randy Orton match? Why do <laughs> oh, I care? I am. I bet you. I, I want to go and buy my ticket. I'm going to drive down and just see these guys. I think, I'd, I think I'm think i more interested in Big Show versus Cass than I am Rusev and Randy Orton. Exactly what Michael Chalice is in the chat here. 
Would you rather see Chad Gable in Rusev Part 2 at SummerSlam? 100%. Yeah. I'd rather him have a sick rematch, man. We saw what they just put up on SmackDown. That was a sick... Chad Gable is insane, man. <laughs> like, why don't they see good... Like, the money... They're complaining about money and making cuts when the dollar signs are right in front of them and they're just literally going, oh, look, money. Oh, that's probably nothing that we need. Or, you know what? When Rusev was out there talking, I was like, man, what if Shelton Benjamin came out here? That'd be awesome. Yeah, like, what? everyone's hoping like, for him, too. I don't know what the like, hell's is going he on with him. back? The, the rumors are always like, it's on and off, it's on and off, it's on and off. I don't fucking know. I'm just going to wait for him to come back now. Fuck, man. Shelton Benjamin versus Chad Gable will be match of the year candidate. That'd be dope. Maybe it happens. We don't know. Um, woman's title picture. Ugh, what the hell, man? Naomi and Natalia. I, I tweeted about it. I'm like... I can't get invested in a Naomi and Natalia because it feel it, that's a B level pay per view feud. Why the hell is it a SummerSlam match? <laughs> I can't get behind that, man. As much as Natty is good getting a, a title shot here, I don't care. I do Where not care. Where was Robo Charlotte this week? She is the real paper champion. Yeah, she, she has some. She had a little bit of the rust, and she got to get some oil on in the shop. Probably WD forty. Yeah. But yeah, we got that her- atrocious tag team match. Oh my god, that was b- bad. Ne- okay, I want to point out a lot of people missed it, and I saw maybe one or two people caught it on uh, Twitter. Do you remember when Na- Naomi slid in the ring and slapped Carmella in the face? Yeah. Did that slide and slap? You The camera angle was bad. It's a way to go production team. You can see Naomi slapping her thigh at the same time to make the slapping sound. Yeah, they they always do that though. Those are the this, snap. That usually, they have the they they show the camera where you can't see it. <laughs> I could see it. <laughs> Go back and watch. You can and look at her other hand. You can see her slapping her thigh. <laughs> way to <laughs> like, go! Way to sell, camera, guys. Way to sell and way to go, producer man. Production. Even team. they even uh, during I think it was Nakamura's entrance. Like when he was in the ring, they were given like a crappy angle from the corner during his entrance. I'm like, what yep. is this? But yeah, anyway, that that women's match, like, what the hell was that? I can't. The women's division is literally boring as shit right now. Naomi and Natalia cannot get behind as much as people want to give me shit for that. I hate the fucking title. It looks like a complete. It's it's borderline like the Divas title. It's on the same. It's it's literally treading the same waters as that old Divas title. I, I hate it. It's it's disgusting. I know it goes hand in hand with Naomi's gimmick, but why why tarnish the title? Why already tarnish a brand new title? Tarnish the title that my girl Alexa built up. Stupid. Tarnish it. Stupid. It's just um, exactly when the only thing John that matters, Cena changed. The only thing that matters right now is when is Carmelo going to cash in? That's really the only thing anyone gives a shit about on SmackDown right now. For the to me, it division. looks like it's going to happen at SummerSlam because who the hell cares about that match anyways? Who the hell is going to be like, oh, yes, can't wait for Naomi and Natalia to face each other. I mean, all the Natalia fans probably, but everyone else is going to be like, mm, I'm going to go take a piss. And then I'll did, wait for the end of the match, and then hear F A B U L O U A S. Why? I, I, I haven't pop. seen. Why can't we get Naomi versus Becky or Charlotte? Why can't That's we what get I thought, that? But I know Becky now is they're going to do something with Cyborg. Maybe Charlotte's going to be into that now. But what is now? What is Lana going to do? What is Tamina going to do? <laughs> oh yeah, apparently Lana is challenging Charlotte to a match next week. Are you kidding me? Yeah, they had like a back like a SmackDown Fallout thing back on YouTube or whatever. You said Lana's, well, Lana's going to get crushed Charlotte. in like a minute and a half. Okay, great. Can't wait for next week. Like, I know people are tired of Charlotte being in the title picture, but like she makes it credible when she's there. So like, why didn't they have her be in the title picture at some point? Yeah. Maybe but. Carmelo should cash in on Naomi next week. <laughs> yeah, when we're there. Fuck God, we're that'd be awesome. Uh, and anyways, I mean it's gonna, and we get, we might as well talk about it next week. We get James Ellsworth coming back because he was tweeting three days. That was like two days ago or yesterday. So he'll be back next week. I'd like to see what they do with him. Great, can't wait. Because they announced next week Naomi's facing Carmella in a one-on-one match. So great. <laughs> can you can you give us the uh, the crickets for uh, James Ellsworth? Oh, for James Ellsworth coming back next week. Yeah, you can get here these crickets. These sounds happening right now. Yep. That's James Ellsworth. That's the reaction you guys get. Like, besides me, I'm going to be like the only one cheering for the guy. Yeah. Anyways, uh, talk about it, main event, Cena Nakamura. It was good, but we couldn't see half of it because there was fucking commercials. Oh. 
I, I'm actually jealous that everyone there got to see the entire thing because I didn't get to see the entire thing. If they, want to, if they want to give us this dream match and rush it, at least let us see the whole thing. Yeah. So now I, now I, I can't. I, they, they wasted Nakamura and Cena ever facing each other again in the future for me. But this was good. For what we've seen, awesome, man. These guys had a lot of chemistry. We had that big, scary spot at the end where Nakamura did his. Uh, his exploder suplex, and then Cena didn't flip all the way, and he landed on his neck. I think that's just a weird spot to do with a guy as stiff as Cena. Cena's not that athletic and can flip like that, so I don't think they should have done that spot, period. Yeah. That was probably a bad idea. But I, think, I cringed I, when I saw that. I think Cena's all right, though. So I, I didn't see anything on Twitter about Cena being injured. Um I guess uh, even if you people even showed gifts of it after when they were shaking hands, Nakamura's like, "I'm sorry," and then John Cena's like, "Don't be sorry." <laughs> yeah, like I was, I I was like, "Fuck, did Cena break his neck?" Because they oh. both could have done better on that. Like, yeah, Nakamura could have thrown him better, but Cena could also learn. Like, Cena knows how to land. Like, come on. I think Cena should have been like, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't do this spot because I don't know if I can flip that far. <laughs> yeah, like he shouldn't be doing that to some guy as big as Cena. Like that's maybe like early awesome. John Cena, but now that he's built up, I, that's a big spot for him to take. Yeah, like I, I honestly thought he was like he was laboring after him. Like, oh my god, Cena just break his neck. Right. Yeah, that would have been great too. going into uh, his big movie in that. But I'm so happy WB went the smart route and they made Nakamura win. I'm so happy they did that. If they had John Cena win, I'd, man, there were moments where I'm like, oh my god, they made fucking John Cena win. <laughs> like when he yeah. hit two the attitude AA. adjustments. Yep. Oh my god, I'm like, oh fuck this shit. I'm turning off the TV. And then he and he's about to go up for the third. He's about to roll him up for the third one, and nope, Nakamura kicks I him. Was and then so happy when that happened. Fuck. But I actually fuck, jumped was- from my couch. <laughs> That's how excited I was, man. I'm like. Yeah. God, why didn't they just give this on a big pay-per-view, man? Look how excited I am watching this on fucking free TV. Man, you know what? I can't, I can't even hate on John Cena anymore, man. Like, the guy's putting everybody over now. Right. So like, now what does sh- Cena do? What does Cena do going to SummerSlam? Maybe he doesn't even appear. Can you imagine? Or hmm. maybe he has a match with Corbin since, you know, Corbin got involved yeah, in that. Yeah, I saw match. that, I guess, uh, after Baron Corbin attacked John Cena. So maybe that's something for yeah. both of them to do. Wait, can I also add that? They... they I switched to 205 Live, and it's still, like, the ending of SmackDown. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then they have that whole ending still. I'm like, why didn't they show that on the actual SmackDown TV? Why did I have to switch over to 205 Live? Because we have too many goddamn commercials, and we miss most of SmackDown. Oh, my God. So, yeah, so, we got yeah. that afterward. That was a pretty sick segment. Like, Nakamura's celebrating. Corbin comes and attacks him. Then Cena comes out for the save. F use him through the table. Yeah. I like that. I like that. So, I actually I- can get invested in a Baron Corbin John Cena. That, that puts a... Uh, Corbin puts, on the map. Yeah, it puts Corbin on the map. It makes people not think of a cash-in likely to happen, which it probably will happen. I only can accept the cash-in to happen is if Nakamura doesn't win the title and he cashes in on Nakamura. The only way I'm accepting a Baron Corbin cash-in is if both of them are lying in the middle of the ring unconscious and then it becomes a triple threat and that's how Baron Corbin gets invested in the match. He throws one of them out of the ring and he pins whoever. Maybe... Shinsuke gives like a, a last second Kinshasa the gender and they're both lying near motionless and then that's when Corbin comes in, throws Nakamura out of the ring and then pins gender for the title. Maybe they do it that way and that sets up a feud between Baron Corbin and Shinsuke for the title. We already saw that feud and it wasn't very good. Yeah, but I don't know. I, uh, I can't I can't think. I, that's the only way I could see Corbin cashing in properly. He cannot cash in on, on gender. On Jinder, because you don't want Jinder Mahal beating Nakamura at SummerSlam. That would make zero sense. Oh, and Nakamura is still undefeated, technically. So, and Nak- it's not ready. Nakamura is not ready to win the WWE title yet. No. You can't just make him win at SummerSlam and lose to Baron Corbin by a cash, and that makes him look like shit. Baron Corbin gets involved in this match and just like kicks the shit out of both of them and gets like one of them disqualified. I don't know. Hits him with the briefcase. Oh, Michael Chow, um, you did not just say that. Oh, well, yeah. He also said something about Kali earlier about how uh, they should have Kali minus – well, we'll have Rusev interfere instead of great Kali at Battleground. Oh, my God. And then no. Trey said apparently they had a dark match, Corbin and uh, uh, Cena, I think, or hmm. someone. They had a, some dark match after 205 Live. It was probably a tag team match. 
But God. I could definitely get behind Corbin and Cena for SummerSlam. That would actually be getting me invested in that. Yep, 100%. So, uh, in terms of winning this week, I'm just going to give the SmackDown. It's not really their fault. They have a lot of commercials. That's like, I mean, it's not like the wrestlers' fault. I wish they had more time, but I'm going to give the SmackDown in terms of winning this week because Raw was just a fucking mess. Um, we also forgot to talk about the the quick uh, the fashion peaks. Oh yeah, the fashion peaks. I didn't I didn't write that down. Damn it. Um, I I still can't. I don't know who did it. They had the ascension. The, the whole... Oh my god, what the hell was that? I I tweeted before this even happened that I I I can kind of see a a broke back mountain kind of sight between these guys. What, was Tyler Breeze on shrooms when he saw that like hallucination of Fandango? It has to do with the movie with apparently. It. It's got to do with them. I forget what movie, but they're playing out of a movie now. So okay, I don't so know what's going on hell? with this, but it's Who's entertaining. Attack- it is funny, but like, who the fuck is attacking Brazongo if it's not Ascension? I don't know, man. I seriously can't put my finger on it, and it's not American Alpha because now they're split up. It's I can't. I, it, people it keep Harper, saying it's Sandy. Like, it's probably Luke Harper and Rowan. They're not anywhere, so I'm, I'm going to guess it's them. But I mean, it continues to be entertaining. But fuck, that I, I don't know what the hell I was watching this week with Fandango and the whole. I don't know what the hell gyrating he was doing. I don't know what that was. But. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah. Uh, next. It's a copy of the TV show Twin Peaks. Okay, uh, well, I don't okay. know that show. So, sorry, Michael Shaw. I'm not a, I'm not a TV buff like you, my sir. <laughs> but, um, as for that, yeah, I guess I have to give it to SmackDown. I didn't see Raw, but, I mean, just as you told me over Raw in two minutes, so I think SmackDown obviously won this week. <laughs> Cameo appearance by Tango Fandango minus Rosa Mendez. <laughs> they should have just had the dangler in there. Fuck. <laughs> Dango. Yeah. Anyways, uh, it's that time of the show, guys. And that is the list of 10. 10. You know what? You know what happens? You know what's going to happen? You just made the list. That's right. It is the list of 10. That part of the show where myself and Corporate Cappy have our superstars that make the list or are a perfect 10. And we give them that rating with a little sound clip on each. So, Corporate Cappy, take it away. Want my 10 moment? Sure. Uh, fuck, I didn't even come prepared for this. <laughs> but I'll have to give it. I think I'm going to give it to uh, Nakamura and Cena. Yeah. And I'll give it to John Cena fighting through the match, even though he got, you know, <laughs> basically planted on his head. Look like he God, broke that his neck. Spot, man. And to finish the match strong and make the Kinshasa look strong, too, after yeah. taking a spot like that, props since to I, Cena. Yeah, since I didn't see Raw. So props to John Cena. I never thought I'd say this, but Cena, you get my perfect. Ten. Yep, for sure. For putting, and for putting Nakamura over, too. Like, we got a we got first here by Corporate Cappy giving a, a perfect 10 to John Cena. Cena, I'm coming around on John Cena. I can't believe it would ever happen, but my perfect moment of the week: Chad Gable. Chad Gable, yes, it's on SmackDown too. And then what a freaking match he had with Rusev! Probably the most talked about thing on SmackDown in total on on, on social media that I've seen. And how much of a, a good match he can put up against a guy like Rusev is incredible, man. Although he lost, though, Chad Gable, that's two matches: once against AJ Styles. And now once again, Rusev, that he sh- he's proven himself that he can hang with the big guy. So I hope WWE can actually see this and push Chad Gable. I don't know what his, his mic skills are like. Um, I remember back in NXT, he kind of had some good mic skills. So I don't know, maybe he's got to work on his charisma a little more. I know a lot of people on Twitter say he's got a, a stoned face, whatever that means. Um, but anyways... Uh, I think Chad Gable is literally almost a complete package, man. I hope they push him. He's got a good entrance theme. He's keeping the American Alpha theme. It's a hype theme. So the guy's ready, man. I think they should push him. And for that, Chad Gable, you get a perfect. That's right. Uh, Well, I'm going to get my list moment since I know what yours is. And for once, it's uh, I'm going to steal it from you since you always take it. Ty Dillinger, where the hell is he this week? That's not his fault. (laughs) No, but I'm saying... To the people who are not booking Ty Dillinger, they make the list. Yeah. So Ty Dillinger, like, why is he never on TV anymore? He gets put in that tag team match with Zayn, and it has some promise. And now he's back to being the, the perfect dark match. Like, honestly, Dude, just send this guy back to NXT. I don't understand. He's, he, 
I don't understand why they, 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 they don't see the dollar signs in Dillinger. And a lot of people give me shit for saying that. The guy's got a good gimmick. He doesn't have to be face. He's got a perfect heel gimmick. I've said it before. You guys have to go back and watch his heel work. His heel work is prime in how he used to open shows. They could definitely do something with him. And he can have a, his own like Miz TV kind of show, man. Ty Dillinger is a workhorse. I don't understand why they're not using him. But again, I, I can say that with a... Sorry. I can say that with a lot of superstars. That they, There's a lot of people that are workhorses and they barely use, a.k.a. Miz. But you know what? And he gets... He gets over with a fucking 10, just like Daniel Bryan got over with a yes chant. How do they not see the dollar signs there? It's I don't the know, same thing. For Ty Dillinger never being on TV and not being utilized on SmackDown Live. You know what? You just made the list. Yep. 100%. So, um, we all, this is the moment I've been waiting for for the show. <sighs> yep, I'm going to have to talk about it because it is my list moment. And the person that makes the list, the superstar that makes the list this week. Is the Big Show. Wow. Yes. Shock. Big Show main eventing on a Raw in 2017. Who in the fuck thinks backstage that that is a good idea? What makes me want to keep watching Monday Night Raw when you have Big Show main eventing it? At this time, period in time in 2017, when you got guys clawing and scratching for that brass ring. Yet you put Big Show in the main event against Big Cass. It literally did fuck all. Like, why do I care about Big Show and Big Cass? Why? Why would I want to be invested in in a, in a feud like that? Because it's it's the bully versus the person who's saving. It's stupid. Bro, it Enzo is absolutely bully. stupid. I do not care. Enzo cuts good promos in the ring. That's it. That's the only thing I can take out of it. And for that Big Show. You know what? You just made the list. That's it. He makes the list. So if, if we, when your boy Big Show comes on next week at Raw, like, are you gonna go to the bathroom? Yeah, I'm gonna go to the merch stand. I'm gonna get some food. I don't care as long as I'm not sitting in my seat watching this dude out on the ring. I'm not going to invest any time watching this shit. Best feud on Raw, in my opinion. Yeah, Trey Patterson. What are you smoking? Uh, he, he, he must be smoking whatever Ty, Tyler Breeze had this week. <laughs> Anyways, um, yes, those are our moments of the week, guys. So, that time of the show, where we get into your fan questions. And boy, do we got some fan questions this week. <laughs> uh, before uh, we get into that, I want to point out Trey. I got your package. To, so, so Trey Patterson sent me a package to the, uh, last week. Oh, he sent me some, just a few. He sent me a few cards that are just funny. He sent me some TNA cards. Some so TNA general, cards. I don't know how he found these things, but they're like TNA cards. So I got Jeff Hardy, Hulk Hogan, Sting, Eric Bischoff, and AJ Styles beats Tommy Dreamer. I don't know where you found these things, but uh, <laughs> thanks for sending them to me. I guess it was a good laugh. I, I laughed like five <laughs> minutes. He also sent me a uh, David Leguan card for some reason. Well, but yeah, David so uh, shout out to you, uh, Trey Patterson, for the TNA cards. I'm sure yeah. these things are, you know, very high in demand. Yeah, thank so you, thank at you. Trey Patterson on Twitter. <laughs> so, getting to your fan questions. First questions come from, he's now named the villain Craig, at Craig Messi on Twitter. Ooh. Turned heel, I like it. Why is SmackDown better than Raw? <laughs> very blunt question. Well, I mean, SmackDown was pretty bad for a while. I mean, it seems like SmackDown after Battleground, they're like, "Oh my god, we really need to step up this product" because that was probably the lowest moment of our of of the entire show. Since Basically, I think back. maybe they're now realizing that maybe they shouldn't have had Battleground. Period. Because that, <laughs> that was probably was like the, the worst lowest idea of ever. The low. That was the you... lowest the low it's been in a year and a half. Because now they only got three weeks to build for SummerSlam. They're getting shafted again. Yeah. Stupid. But uh, in terms of being better than Raw, it's better now just for the last two weeks. It's better creative-wise and storyline-wise. Time-wise, it sucks because it gets way too many commercials and it's only a two-hour gap. But honestly, I think SmackDown can actually benefit from three hours. I think if you add in that third hour and you kick out 205 Live to Wednesday nights, I think SmackDown actually can be a good show, man. You have the roster and the storylines to make SmackDown a good three-hour show. Because right now, it seems like two hours is not long enough. And you leave SmackDown, you're like, man, I wish there was more. Like, we didn't see everybody. Like, Dillinger could get on TV if it was three hours. Right? I think maybe you can do it. Maybe you could... 
I don't know. It's weird. Two even maybe even two and a half hours is is a little cutting it a little weird. But I think SmackDown can actually benefit from three hours. That's just my opinion. I think um, with a couple NXT call ups, I think it definitely could. Yeah. Next question: How long do you reckon Enzo has got with all of this backstage heat? Can see him going anywhere in his career. Probably tag team with Big Show. Oh fuck! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> That'd be a part of Rye wouldn't be watching. Um, I don't know, man. Imagine Big Show takes over Cass's part in the entrance. Craig, man. I, <laughs> the guy was in the main event this week, so I don't know if the Heat's actually doing anything for him. But Big Show and Enzo in a tag team, I'm done, man. I'm done. I would not watch that shit. <laughs> And he, say, he wouldn't even have to change the whole gimmick. It could be, and Big Show, he's seven feet tall, and you can't teach. Them. Oh, my fucking. You can't say he's 500 pounds anymore. Big Show's cut, you know. He's like 300 and something now. His big beard. Yeah. But, yeah, I think Enzo's Actually, he doesn't go- have a beard anymore. You missed it this oh. week. He's uh, clean shaved. He's got his uh, goatee back. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's, he, he looks like old school show. Michael Chow, he's losing money. Enzo will be first to be cut. <laughs> I, I actually can agree with Michael Chow here. I don't <laughs> Poor know. Enzo, I think, man. Okay, anyone that's out there, give us your opinion in the chat on who's going to be the first cut in the new WWE roster cutbacks. Who's going to be the first one cut? I'm going to say Darren Young. <laughs> as sad as he's trying to build his way back, it's probably going to be Darren Young. I'm saying it's going to be Kurt Hawkins, 100%. Or Kurt Hawkins. Poor guy, man. <laughs> He's, He's on, on like a hundred loss of losing streak right now. One hundred losing streak. It was on made WWE dot com, and he was like posting it like it yeah, was. Yeah, did a you big see Darby's reaction back? They're like, "Oh, that's a hundred paychecks to cash in." Like, fuck! What the fuck is Darby's logical answers to everything? He's like, "Oh, he's still making money." We don't care if he's making money or not. We're talking about his credibility. They're so... Darby are a bunch of fucking meatheads, man. Unbelievable. That's their answer for everything. Oh, they're making money. We're making money. Clearly not, Trey. since you're making cutbacks. Our boy at Trey Patterson on Twitter says Brian Kendrick. I don't know about that. Yeah, where the hell has he been? He was on 205 Live this week. Face oh Jack wow! Gallagher. Finally, Jack Gallagher like kick. Jack Gallagher got himself disqualified this week on 205 Live because he just kicked the shit out of Brian Kendrick and didn't. Uh, Heal Gallagher? <laughs> yeah, no, but he, he like brought out some aggression. He didn't recognize the referee's five count and got himself disqualified. <laughs> And uh, so, the next question is not really a question, Mike Greg Messi. He's like, Titus Worldwide is the next big thing. You heard it here first. I'm close to joining. Oh, my God. And did you see they had the, the fallout? He was about, he was talking to Dana Brooke about adding her to the Titus brand. I'm like, oh, my God, great. Well, they got a T-shirt for it now. Yeah, for Dana Brooke at coming great. to the Titus brand. What else is she fucking doing? Whatever. Maybe that'll be good for her. Anyways. Next. Um, Next comes from our boy, Casey Salvis. That's Salvis94 on Twitter. He puts, how excited are you guys for SummerSlam? What do you think about Matt Hardy saying on Twitter they're going broken? Um, I'm excited for SummerSlam. I think it's shaping up to be an okay card so far, and they're building it to be huge. So um, we have some decent matches, some matches I still question, like Rusev and Randy Orton. Um, Big show and cast. But I am excited. I'm excited for SummerSlam. Of course I am. Um, I am what, too. Uh, about sorry, Matt Hardy and the broken thing, I think it's gonna happen SummerSlam. Like I said, I'm I'm pumped. Broken Hardys gonna, is gonna equal money for the WWE. I think it's gonna happen the day after SummerSlam because is it is it gonna be in uh, oh, at the whoa. Barclays Center? <laughs> I think your mic just kind of crapped out there. Okay, let me call that. All right, so Corporal Cavi's gonna call back. That was uh, weird. I'm not sure what the heck that noise was. Ah, but uh, I can't wait for a broken mat to be broken. Honestly, that's probably going to be... Derby is going to make so much money with this broken gimmick. The merch sales are going to go through the roof. They'll probably be number one in merch. It's just going to be something people will look forward to on Monday Night Raw, too. I honestly think so. And I also think that maybe Matt Hardy breaks off from Jeff Hardy eventually. Probably. And I think you got Cobra Cappy back here. Hello. Hello. Right. Okay. Yeah, what I was kinda, saying. Yeah. It kinda sounded like your mic was like breaking off like a, you're playing with the cord. No. Oh. Okay. What I was saying was I think they're going to be broken the day after SummerSlam because it's going to be at Barclays Center still, right? So it's going to be like a, a still like a marked crowd. 
I, I, I'm, I'm still sticking with my prediction that it's going to be at SummerSlam. We're going to get. The I mean, that would be nuts, but yeah. Um, they're going to be sell so much merch. That's going the broken gimmick is going to make there to be a buttload of money. The merch is going to fly off the shelf for one. That's probably going to be like the best selling merch on the shop. Two people actually have something to look forward to on Monday Night Raw. They just want to see Matt Hardy. They could skip the entire Raw and just want to see Matt Hardy. Oh, you don't want to see Cass and Big Show? And no. And three, um, eventually he'll break off from Jeff Hardy, and we're going to get a Jeff Hardy singles run again. Which Great. I mean, it's it's crazy because the crowd goes nuts for Jeff Hardy, and it's just like Randy Orton. How how Randy Orton's like the most boring person on the face of the planet, and the most boring wrestler in the company. Yet the crowd pops so hard for some reason when Randy Orton comes out. I'm like, why are you cheering this guy? Except that pay per view is when the Mark crowds come out. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I can't wait for uh, Broken Matt Hardy. Uh, next question by Casey: Do you think WWE should bring back Velocity and Sunday Night Heat? <laughs> Love those shows. Better shows than Battleground. <laughs> well, they have main event and superstars, which is basically what Heat and Velocity were. Yeah, I think wasn't Sunday Heat like the 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 pre show before the pay per view? That's basically what the pre show is. It's basically Sunday Night Heat. And on weeks that it wasn't a pay-per-view, it was before Raw, and yeah. Velocity was before SmackDown. So. I don't know. Was it, was, didn't they bill so the Velocity as like a Saturday night? Yeah. I don't <laughs> know. I don't want them to bring it back because it would just be terrible. Like, it, yeah. it wouldn't be good. I don't know if I'd watch it. Uh, next question. How excited are you guys for Raw and SmackDown in Toronto? Can't wait to boo Roman Reigns. This guy is still garbage, and he's got a gif of a trash can exploding out of a garbage truck. Yes, Casey, we are excited too. I know you're going, but you're not sitting with us. But and then Michael Chow going. is like, "Where did you get the video footage of the WB writers' room?" <laughs> Love it. That's great. But yes, Ron Toronto is going to be good. I can't we can wait. I honestly, I'm so pumped about being a super mark and just getting to do Kurt Angle. You suck again. Like oh I've never God, been able yeah. to do that. Like, I hope um, he has an entrance so yeah, bad. Yeah, we've never got to do that. That's the one never. thing we will do. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, and definitely walk away when Big Show comes out. Um, so we're going to go into our last set of questions. And that comes from our 2016 Fan of the Year. That's right. It goes to Michael Chow TV, and this is his entrance team. You're wondering why he's got his own entrance team. It's because he won our 2016 No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast Fan of the Year. And if you win this glorious award at the end of the year, you get to have your entrance team before your tweets get, get read right here on the podcast. And that's the song Michael Chow chose for his tweets. TJP. And I was going to shout out to Michael Chow. Who was backstage playing video games with Mustafa Ali for some reason. Or no, Rich Swan on 205 Live. Uh, that's oh. what he's doing. So he's a face again. Yep. Oh. Anyways, Michael Chow TV has his own podcast, WWE MC TV. Go check him out. He's got on Spreaker, guys. He's also on Twitter, at Michael Chow TV. Go give him a follow and listen to his wrestling podcast. He also has contests as well. So go check him out. He is a good fellow friend of the podcast. He puts, Are you worried about Shinsuke versus Jinder? Both are bad on the mic. Shinsuke won't be able to carry gender in the ring. This was a bad idea. I agree. Just have Shinsuke just do his hand thing and have gender go Punjabi. And there you go. How the hell are these guys going to talk in the ring? For one, gender can't talk in the ring because I can't fucking hear the guy. Sounds like he's on volume 10 <laughs> out of 100. Then Shinsuke comes out and he can say like two words and then that's it. And then he... <laughs> Is it more exciting than Orton versus Jinder? I think it's more weird. Like, I don't know. I can't get... I'm not barely hyped. I think people are just going to be hyped. They're like, okay, when's Baron Corbin coming out? When's Baron Corbin coming out? I think Baron Corbin should just cash in to make it a triple threat and make things more interesting. I think they should have had Cena in there as in the triple threat. Cena, Nakamura, and Jinder. Yeah, maybe they will. Maybe they're going to have Cena do that. Who knows? Or maybe I'll have another Fatal 4-Way. I'll fucking Corbin and Cena in there. Oh might as well make God. it Fatal. Could you might as well change SummerSlam's pay-per-view name to Fatal 4-Way. I don't think it's going to happen because he's got the briefcase. So I don't think we're going to see Baron Corbin any title match until he cashes it in. But I don't know. Uh, I think right now, looking at it from that perspective, it's a bad idea. 
So we'll see. I, it's one of those things where we'll see what happens, man. They got what two weeks of SummerSlam. We'll see. Well, I just I don't know how they're gonna have a Nakamura and gender promo. That's gonna be horrible. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're gonna might see it live firsthand next week. Holy fuck! Uh, next question: Cena is confirmed to be going to Raw, going to the Raw after SummerSlam as well. Confirmed for Raw's No Mercy. Who should be his first feud? He says Braun. Hmm. I think his first feud is probably going to be whoever wins the Universal title match. 100%. He's going to go from the Darby title to the Universal title. Because he's never won the Universal Championship. They're going to have to put it around Cena sometime, probably. Or we get... Sorry. I'd love to see Samoa Joe. That's what I'm saying, Joe. Because they actually faced at a live event this week, so I think they're preparing for that. Because usually on live events... They do like matches that they pro- might do on the yeah. They test the waters TV. out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So I think they tested for that. So I would love to see Joe versus Cena. Yeah, I can go with that. Uh, this isn't a question, but I feel like it has to be said. Raw was an absolute mess. TV dream matches doesn't equal we don't have to book anything else good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we like the main event we got. <laughs> He's got to give a monkey eating paper. That's definitely what a. WWE creator backstage looks like right now, to be honest, man. God. Raw creative know. is like a broom full of monkeys, man. It's terrible. What, what, is, what is creative about them? Like, You know what it is? I, 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 our boy No Self Phil pointed this out, and I actually laughed at it, and you'll laugh at it too, Brandon. Vince McMahon is Mr. Burns, and the, the room full of monkeys that he had is the WWE creators. On and Raw. Mr. Smithers is Kevin Dunn? Yep. <laughs> and if anyone watched The Simpsons and knows what I'm talking about, that's exactly what's going on backstage in the creator's room. <laughs> or it's like in Homer's brain. Or just yep. a bunch of monkeys doing stuff. Yep. But yeah, like, how can you even call yourself a creative team with the crap they're putting on TV? There's no excuse. With the roster that they have, dude, the people on Twitter are writing better storylines and better feuds than the people backstage who are getting paid to do it. Like, out of the ten feuds, they might get one or two right at most. It's not even just like good. I know there's people on Twitter that like to mark out and like want to big make big matches every week and I know you can't do that. But there's actually there's the smarter fans out there that are actually making logical bookings that are I'm like, why are they making logical bookings and the people that are getting paid for it are doing fuck all? And you know, it always goes back to they're probably actually making good ideas, but Vince McMahon comes down saying, No, I don't like that, I want it this way and they're like, Okay, we have to go with Vince's way. I like what Triple H said about his slow. He likes the slow build because the payoff is so much so huge. I, like, I agree with him. I love the slow build. Dude, look what the fuck they're doing for McGregor and Mayweather. They're touring around the whole world for like a month and a half before they actually have the fight. They don't need to do that, but the long build pays off. Yeah, the, the payoff is huge, like Triple H says, and I agree with him. I like the slow builds for stuff. Like, why do they have to rush crap? It's terrible, man. It's... And like I said, they, they play the odds. Out of 10 feuds, if two of them are good. No, it's all right. We got two out of 10. Two of the feuds are good. It's bad, man. Again, I said it earlier in the show. Vince McMahon has lost touch with the product. Good luck giving the Exploder Suplex this giant steroid gender. Shinsuke's going to kill him. Bye-bye, gender. I think gender's going to kill Shinsuke, man. Guys, uh, that clean diet is making him even stronger. Man, that like diet unsafe is unsafe in the ring. That un- <laughs> but anyways, so I, next week is going to be a big week for us. Yeah, big week, guys. So next week, we're we're trying to go to SmackDown, but for sure going to Raw. We got the tickets. We're going to be in row one of the three hundred level, right on the hard camera side. So you won't be able to see us because the camera's tilted down. But we'll be row one of the three hundreds up there. Um, Good so, view of the stage. So. Yep, and uh, I don't know where we're going to be sitting for SmackDown. When we get the tickets, I'll let you guys know. But big week for us next week, and then look out. I think we're going to do the draft video next week, a live draft. I'm trying to get it uh, hooked up to YouTube Live. I still haven't done any tests. I know I should be doing tests, but I've just been too busy the last couple of days. So I'll try to get some tests done and hopefully get it at YouTube Live. If not, it'll be right here on Spreaker, and then I'll convert it to YouTube with some graphics for you. I'll do that. It'll probably take me a day to make all the graphics, but that's okay. I'm really good at it. So. Yes, you are. Yeah, and we're going to be doing it with the host that runs the West Coast. So, yeah. So, anyways, guys, that is going to wrap it up for week number seventeen of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian WWE podcast that reacts and discusses Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week. 
Also, during the show, we have our segment called The List of Ten. And we have your fan tweet questions out there that we read right here and answer on the show. Remember, every week, The Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker. Available at Spreaker.com slash NHBWR or on the Spreaker app that's available for all Android and Apple devices. After we are done recording, the podcast is posted in full on Spreaker itself on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR. So go over there and give us a subscribe and hit that bell icon for all upload updates. It is also available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio for you by searching up No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Go check us out wherever it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us. You can follow the show on Twitter, or you can follow the show. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. We're also available on Facebook and Instagram. All links will be down in the YouTube video version of this podcast. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And I'm joined this week by my corporate co-host via Skype, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Duh, Ellsworth's free. <laughs> oh, God. And guys, we are always reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. So what you gonna do about it? You gonna keep your soul in there, but what you gonna do?